be bitter or mad. I had a choice on Friday. I could either be bitter about it, be mad about it, be sad about it, be whatever, but I had to make a choice. And well, sometimes we come to those forks in the road and we've got to take take the take the choice and make a choice and go one way or the other. But I went back to one of my favorite Bible stories about teenagers. So I went back to Daniel chapter 3. To see my battle cry for many years as a youth pastor is I still believe in teenagers. I, I've said that from small stadium stage, stages to the youth, youth night at the Coliseum with 9,000 people in there. I said, I still believe in teenagers. And I believe God still wants to use teenagers. Some people ask me, Mike, what in the world are you doing, man? You're too old to be doing that. What are you sleeping on the couch? And just ask Landon if you don't believe me. But you see some crazy stuff with our guys. And you smell some crazy stuff with our guys. I think we need to definitely invest in Dr. Scholes. <laughs> and teach some of them how to, yeah, for breeze. And plus, Hunter Ball's hard. hard. Hunter was not here this weekend with us, but he was in camp with us. And every time I went to the store and went somewhere, he said, Mike, bring for breeze. <laughs> Hunter was like, oh, goodness. I'm not going to get into a lot of details here, but Lad and I, uh, Sleeping in camp, and we were both on one end, and I had a fan going directly on me. Well, one of our boys, which I would not call by name, comes in there after playing outside all day with wet soccer socks on, and he puts them in front of that fan. <laughs> I'm telling you, I thought somebody's going to die because of my And I, I, I almost said his name. I said, you gotta get them socks out of here. You gotta go throw them away. I don't care, but you gotta get them out from that fan. But that's what you get staying sometimes with teenagers. Daniel chapter 3. We're gonna begin in verse 1, and I'm not I'm not gonna read all this, but I'm gonna tell, tell you some of this in story form, and I'll read some of this to you. Now the nature is gold statue, and I, from this time forward, I'm gonna just call it for, to keep this short and call it King Nell. Is that okay? I'm tired. <laughs> so I'm ready to go to the choir. <laughs> Just kidding. But he, they built a statue of gold 90 feet tall and 90 feet wide. And they threw a dedication for this statue and he invited all the public officials and all the, all the I said here, all the big wigs to come to the dedication of this golden statue. It was huge. They all showed up for this huge for this dedication. Then a herald gave an decree to all the nations and the people. If you do not bow, what? You're gonna be thrown into a fire furnace. If you do not bow, you will be thrown into the fire furnace. And this is the way they said it. There will be all kinds of instruments played. And when you hear that music, that is your key to what? To bow down and worship the, the golden idol, but also to worship me as a king. That was the decree to all people, but all across the nations when those instruments went off, most of them bowed down. Most, of, most everybody bowed down to that statue. Then here comes some little title tales. In the Bible it says astrologers or Chaldeans. Any of y'all had siblings with title tales? Some of y'all probably were title tales. You know what? The astrologers came up to the king and said something like this. Have you heard? 
and not everybody bow down. Or some of us, some of y'all like this. Y'all, y'all spiritualize it. And so we're probably we probably need to pray about this. <laughs> so and so is seeing somebody and then you know but that's the difference in, in uh, prayer requests and flat out gossip. And sure, uh, you, you probably don't need it. Look, I live in one church, I'm not gonna go oh Lord, I'm not gonna say their name, but but if I ever wanted something to be spread, I would have told them, don't say it, don't tell them. It's gone. <laughs> it was gone. But that's what it was. There was talent there. They came and he said, King Nero. The reality is, is not everybody about that. Not everybody bowed down. When they heard the music, there was, and there was at, at least few people that did not bow. I put in my notes and said, Oh King, we hate to tell you this. In the southern Hebrew, hogwash. <laughs> they were ready to tell and to be the tattletales. They reminded the king of what? The decree and the punishment for, for not doing it. He said, you remember what you declared? We, you remember what the decree was? Then they told of the three Hebrew teenagers who the king had put in charge of the Babylonian province. Why? Some people say it might be because of power. They wouldn't be elevated in the, in, the, in the kingdom, in the nation. Some said it might be because of jealousy or envy. Well, these three, three Hebrew teenagers put in charge of something. It could be a lot of those things. It could be buttering him up. But here's King Neb's response. He flew into a rage. But in southern uh, language, we would say he pitched a hissy fit. None of y'all probably done that, have you? He stomped a hole in the ground. I'll never forget when I was in Odell, Louisiana, coaching baseball. We'd gone to Alexandria. And I had a whole out on Highway 65. And I got there to take those lug nuts off. And y'all been there before, guys. And they don't come off. So they put that on there with that machine. And I'm telling you, I, I was. And I just thought it would be a hiss. <coughs> I was upset. I was mad. So I took that long run and I threw it at the top. Guess what? It bounced right back and hit me in the chin. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, I started running up and down the highway saying, Praise Jesus. You know, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> but I, I, I literally to look and see the knot beginning to come up on my chin. And I'm like, you know, I didn't go to Ole Miss, but I'm like, Mike, that wasn't too smart. <laughs> and he pitched a hissy fear. He was upset. He was upset. And T. now says, okay, bring me those three boys. Bring them to me. Those three Hebrew teenagers. And he looks at those three he, uh, Hebrew teenagers he, said, he asked him, he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is it true that you would not bow down to, to me or that statue? Surely you heard the decree. Surely you know what it was told you to do. But they said they would not bow down. And the king says, I'll give you one more chance. I'll give you one more chance. I was talking to Landis about this the other night. And I'm not going to question your, your, your way of parenting, but the way of parenting now is a little different than the way of parenting back from my day. And some of us, like my small son, 
and my other uh, uh, nephew and, and niece, they don't believe in, in spanking. That's, and that's fine. But that's just a different world. But I'm going to tell you right now, I see people do this. Now tell their children. Okay, one, two, two and a half. <laughs> Look, my mama, my mama never counted. <laughs> she, she didn't believe in counting. Because when, when I did something and I disrespected her, it said something bad to her, she grabbed whatever. But she she had put up with that stuff. But this is what King Nell says. Okay, we, just in case you didn't remember, we're going to give you another chance. So the music is going to play, and this time you have the opportunity to make it up and bow down when you hear that music. And, when, and then, what, he says, what a little G-O-D, make sure you know that it's a little G-O-D, will be able to rescue you from my power. What was a Hebrew teenager's response? Oh, King Dale, we don't have to answer you. Oh, even, we don't have to defend ourselves before you. We don't. We don't have to answer you or defend ourselves and our actions to you. And I love this part. Verse 17. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve, big G-O-D, is able to save us and rescue us from the power of your majesty. But in verse 18, it's the game changer. Oh, for us to have this kind of faith. That what? Even if he, what? Does That's a mouthful to say. But that's a whole lot different to live that. You sit there with your children. You've got a phone call like Mallory that C word cancer. Well, when you start praying for people for healing for different things, and, and you can come to that faith, God, even if you don't, I'm going to praise you. Even if you don't. So that's what he said. Go ahead, throw me in there. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, we will never serve or worship your little G-O-D gods or that big honking gold statue. They did not bow, they did not bend, or they did not break. And then King Nell went from throwing a kissing fit and he blew a gas. He literally blew a gasket. And yet, you know, y'all seen some of y'all parents do that. But I know they seen y'all do it. I've seen some of y'all. And when he is, he just blow a gasket. You just completely lose it. You ain't got no sense. You done got mad. Somebody made you mad. And more the top done blown off. That's the way he knew. What? Okay. All right. He said, I got you. Go in there and heat that fire furnace up seven times hotter than it's ever been heated up. I got you. You ain't gonna bow down to me. Go heat it up seven times hotter than it's ever been burned. And he ordered some of the strongest men to bind them first. Why? Look, seriously, why, why would you bind up somebody? Uh, ropes or whatever and bind them up before you throw them into a fire because they've been heated up seven times hotter. Bind them. But that's what they did. Fully clothed, they threw them into the furnace and it was so hot that it killed the three strong men. They killed them. 
And so now they're in the furnace. It says in Scripture, verse 24, but suddenly, King Neb jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, I love this part. <laughs> Didn't we tie up three men? Throw them into the furnace? Yes, Your Majesty. We certainly did, they replied. Look, King Nebuchadnezzar, I see four men, not three, unbound, walking around in the fire, what? Unharmed. And the fourth looks like a God, or some of your translation says, looks like what? The Son of God. Then here comes King Nell. He came as close as he could in verse 26 to the fire and to the door. And he shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High. Now he changed. Servants of the Most High Big capital letter G O D. Come out. Come here. Come out of the fiery furnace. And they stepped out. They stepped out of the fiery furnace. And they were fully examined by everybody. They were all amazed because the fire had not. And as being a, a country boy and somebody who loves to hunt and sits around fire a lot, I still am amazed at this scripture. He said the fire had not touched them. Remember, it's seven times hot. Not a hair was singed, clothes not scorched, and not even a hint or a tinge of the smell of smoke. Now, I know some of you guys have grilled and set fires, caught fires in, in, in the burn, but sends the hair off your hands, just a little fire. It just sends, sends them. But the one that gets me is not even a, a hint of the smell of smoke. I hunt a lot, but I love to go out. One of my favorite things is not just to sit in a stand, but to go sit out by the fire, kick it up the hill. Sit by the fire. But I learned this. When I come in from off my stand, I, I immediately take off my hunting clothes. Because I know whatever I wear out there to that fire is going to smell like what? Smoke. I mean, it reeks of smoke. Some of you go, I can go to a particular restaurant. Just say a Mexican restaurant, and you come out of there, and we know where it's in. But you, it's, it, you leave with that smell, but it says that they, you can't even. There was not even a hint of the smell of smoke. You know what those three teenagers did? Remember back when you were children, you went out and skipped rocks. Across the, the water and see how many times you skip. Then sometimes somebody, somebody around you want to be cute. They take up a big brick or a rock and said, I, I skip it and just throw it out there and make a big splash. It makes big rivers. Well, those three big ideas, that's what they did. They threw a big rock and the ripples went everywhere. It affected everybody around. The, the, the king that told them said, You're going to bow down to me. You're going to serve my little G.O.D. God. Those three who were teenagers come out and said, no, we will not do that. And they threw a big rock. And the ripples went everywhere. It changed the game. It changed every, everybody around. And we know a big rock in Christianity and our relationship with Christ is going to affect a lot of people. We thought a little bit of pepper went, oh, okay, okay. I'm going to come to Sunday school and I'm going to throw that rock out there. It'll be a couple, but 
times we need to go to Big Rock. I was telling my teenagers on fixing clothes. When I was at Park Place Baptist Church, one of my church's kids there had him a student ministry. I think I've shared a little bit about this before. When he was in Northwest Rankin, there was back when President, President Rankin, I think, was uh, in office. They were trying to establish Bible schools in, in, in public schools. And trying to say, hey, could you have them or not? And I'll never forget these two same boys were in Waco, Texas, at Friends Prayer with him. And Bill Jones was the speaker. And they, these two boys walked up to Bill Jones after preaching a similar message. And they said to him, these two little eighth grade boys, and says, said, uh, Brother Bill, we're going to do big things for God. And he sort of shut them off and said, okay, okay, I've heard that kind of stuff before. Well, sure enough, Josh Ray, Andy Mullins stood up in defense of a Bible club at their public high school, and it it and through such a big rock, it went all the way to New York. Not the Lincoln County Gazette or wherever you grew up. The New York Times sent a reporter down to interview those two boys about what they were doing and why they were doing it. One of the coolest things, they were on the front page of the New York Times. And one of them had a shirt on. It says, and the, the reporter called back and said, I, we can see your shirt, but we don't understand. You know what it says? It says Romans 1 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation. Those boys threw a big rock. And it affected people all the way to New York. They changed the king and everybody around them. You know what? We have some teenagers folks with big rocks. You won't see it in just a moment. Lionel and I was praying last night and talking last night, and I, I did something that I don't, I don't know that I've ever done. With, with, our, with any group I ever have ever led. I looked at Lionel and I said, Lionel, we're fixing to walk out of here. We're going to leave them. They've heard me enough. It's time for them to. To man up, talk together, and do something. We stayed out probably 15 to 20 minutes. I don't know. And they came back and they said, Hey, we're still doing our Bible study. I think that's good. <laughs> but when they finally asked us to come back in, when I'm agreed to this and said, I know in the bottom of my heart that I really don't know Jesus and I will. We had a hallelujah party in the middle of that living room last night as one of our teenagers gave their heart and threw a big rock last night and we celebrate. And we're going to get to celebrate in just a moment as they come forward. Aiden made a decision at our fall retreat, a winter retreat, and the other one will come down in just a moment, we get to celebrate with him. Can I just say this? There's no one like our God. There is no one like our big G O D God. You might never see a 90 foot tall statue that's not big wide. Somebody may never demand you to bow down to that idol. There's so many ways we bow down to different idols. They're not statues. They're not made out of gold. But an idol is anything we give more to than the Lord. It can be a relationship for these teenagers. It can be a sport. It can be anything. 
anything received. God is a jealous God. He is a jealous God. He wants everything for us. But that's the way it is. When we bow down to idols. But I love what those boys says, and we'll close with this. Lord, give my Christian the faith. But even if you don't, I still won't pray.